Hello, this is Dr. Lindsay. And in this video, we're going to go over the Keynesian macroeconomic model using supply and demand. And we're going to go through first the demand side, the aggregate demand side. The next video, we'll go over the, the aggregate supply part. So in our model, we have, we're going to have a downward sloping aggregate demand curve. This is the demand for all goods and services and an upward sloping exit supply curve. Maybe kind of flat, maybe upward sloping a little bit, but not vertical. So this will be aggregate supply. So the, the supply of all goods and services in the economy and the demand curve will be aggregate demand, the demand for everything in the economy. And I abbreviate aggregate supply for just AS. On the horizontal axis is quantity. The total quantity demanded or produced in the economy, which is real GDP. Which we symbolize as a big capital Y which is also the symbol for income because what we produce is also our income. On the vertical axis, we can put price, which will be the price level of everything in the economy. Now, in most of the textbooks, this is what we have. This is an older model, which is the original model, it came out in the 40s. But in the last 10, 20 years, we've been slowly moving to an, another model that has inflation on the vertical axis instead of price. Now, it sounds kind of similar. What's the difference, price and inflation? Well, the price is just the price level. Inflation is the growth rate of the price level. So if we put price on that vertical axis, the equilibrium is just at some price level. But that's not really realistic in our economy because most of the time we always have some inflation. So putting inflation on the vertical axis allows us to have an equilibrium at some inflation rate. So we're gonna use this model here to explain how the economy works. So now just like a normal demand curve, this Aggregate demand curve is downward sloping. And if the inflation rate changes, then that changes the quantity demanded. So what's going to make this shift? We know here that if inflation changes, it causes a movement on the demand curve, what's going to make this shift? What's going to make this say this whole demand curve shift to the right? That means at the same inflation rate, what would make it increase in aggregate demand? Why would aggregate demand increase? Remember, remember that aggregate demand is C plus I plus G plus X minus M. So if any of those things increase, it will increase aggregate demand. And that is shown by a shift in this aggregate demand curve to the right. So reasons why it shifts to the right, I'll give you one reason, you can probably figure out the rest, is an increase in consumption. Increase in C will increase aggregate demand. And it increases the C plus I plus G plus X minus M. And that moves the aggregate demand curve to the right. What would increase C? Well, taxes falling 
would increase consumption. Uh, confidence, people's confidence would increase uh, their spending. Um, wealth would increase their spending. And I, I'm going to abbreviate wealth with just a big capital W. But if wealth was to increase, people would spend more. The stock market went up and you have a lot of money in the stock market and suddenly it's worth more and you're wealthier, guess what? You might be inclined to go spend some of that money. And that's what people do. When wealth goes up in the economy because homes have gone up in value or the stock market's gone up in value, then they start spending more money and consumption goes up and that aggregate demand curve shifts to the right. What else? I'll give you a hint. There's four things here that would make aggregate demand curve shift to the right, four categories. And we've gone through all of them already. So what's the next one? An increase in C. This increase in I. Investment spending. That goes up, aggregate demand curve shifts to the right. What's going to make investment spending go up? And remember, one of the big categories of investment spending is new homes. What would make people go out and start buying new homes? Confidence. An increase in confidence in the economy. Keynes referred to that as animal spirits, which now we would just refer to as increase in confidence. What else would make people go out and start buying new homes? How about lower interest rates? Lower interest rates, real or nominal, could make people, it makes it cheaper to go out buy a house, the payments are lower because the interest rate you have to borrow the money is less. What else would make aggregate demand shift to the right? Oh, how about an increase in G? And one more, what is it? An increase in net exports. So an increase in exports minus imports. Any of those four categories that came, Keynes came up with as part of aggregate demand, any of those go up, aggregate demand will shift to the right. But would make it shift to the left. Exactly the opposite. A decrease in consumption, a decrease in investment a decrease in government spending, a decrease in exports minus imports. And what would make that happen? Confidence in the economy falling, increase in taxes, decrease in wealth, higher interest rates. Stock market falls a lot. Aggregate demand might decrease. Housing prices fall a lot aggregate demand will decrease. Interest rates go up, aggregate demand will decrease.